I remember it all as if it were yesterday. I loved my husband. I really did. But sometimes, love isn't enough. Our relationship started out so wonderful. He used to come by my house and surprise me every chance he got. I remember when he first told me how serious he was about me. He took me on this romantic picnic to this delightful little park, and we sat underneath this huge willow tree. He told me how much he loved me, and that one day, when he had enough money, he wanted to marry me and make me Mrs. Merritt. We were together for four years before we got married. Those were the best four years of my life. He was so sweet and caring, always wanted to make sure I had everything my heart desired. My favorite thing he ever got me was this cute little puppy named Goober. I used to love to watch him run around the farm chasing anything that ran in his way. Tom and I ended up taking Goober with us when we got married and he used to love to run around our farm too. Our first year was absolutely perfect. He would bring me fresh flowers from my kitchen every day. We'd stay up all night talking and laughing. He could make me laugh. One day, I decided I was going to cook him his favorite dinner, pork chops. Boy, did I make a mess of that. <laughs> I burned those pork chops so badly, our whole house was filled with smoke. And I was so upset. But my sweet Tom sat me down and told me how wonderful I was and actually attempted to eat them. I couldn't help but laugh at his face when he was trying to chew that very tough meat. It all felt then that our love would last forever. Until suddenly, something changed. I'm not sure what happened. It just didn't seem to connect anymore. The Great Depression had started, and he was always gone trying to find jobs or just out of the house. And I started to feel lonely, really lonely, as if I just didn't matter anymore. Plus, I was only 35 and still young at heart. I just wanted to feel loved and needed again. But Tom was always so preoccupied. The loneliness started eating away at my heart. Then, like an answer to my prayer, I met the most charming young man who came by the house one day looking for odd jobs around the farm. His name was Elmer Carr. He was young, barely a teenager, but so handsome. I never meant for it to be more than a friendship, but he treated me like a princess, and he made me feel the way Tom used to make me feel. Elmer and I were together for about a year before I started to feel real guilty. I could start to tell that Tom was suspecting something, even though I don't think he knew I knew. He came home early one day, and Elmer barely made it to the back of the smokehouse before Tom walked in. I think he saw him, but I couldn't be certain because he never said anything. That night, I told Elmer he needed to leave me and end it, but he wouldn't. He was determined that I was going to be his and his alone forever. The next day, what I feared the most happened. I never wanted him to get hurt. Who could want something like that for someone they loved for so long? But Elmer didn't want to share me anymore, and he knew that if he didn't react first, Tom would. So he shot him. And before I knew it, we were both on trial. Elmer got off so easy, just 14 years. But me, I wasn't so lucky. Silent before the jury, returning no word to the judge when he asked me if I had ought to say against the sentence. Only shaking my head. What could I say to people who thought a woman of 35 was at fault when her lover of 19 killed her husband? Even though she had said to him over and over, go away, Elmer, go far away. I've maddened your brain with the gift of my body. You will do some terrible thing. And just as I feared, he killed my husband, with which I had nothing to do before God. Silent for 30 years in prison, in the iron gates of Joliet swung, as the gray and silent trustees carried me out in a coffin. <laughs>